Wait, Genshin now has in-game talent recommendations and artifact stat recommendations? Alright guys, if you want to build Xiao, refer to these tabs in-game, and that's it for the Xiao guide, so I'll see y'all in the next one. All jokes aside, you're here because you want to know everything about Xiao, not just the basics. I know people are wondering whether his build has changed at all and whether or not it's still worth pulling him. I've had Xiao since 1.3, but it wasn't until recently that I really invested some resources into him. And after building him up fully, the answer to both of those questions is yes. He's been able to keep up a good level of DPS, and he's gotten a new build option that competes with his classic build all the way back from patch 1.3. If you like Xiao's character, by all means pull him because he is a very easy and balanced character to use, similar to the way that Ito fits into Genshin's character cast. As always, this guide will cover everything you need to know from artifacts and weapons to general playstyle and team compositions. Without further ado, let's get this guide rolling. Jumping straight into the meat and potatoes, most players are probably asking, what artifact set do I choose for my Xiao? Well, to start things off, the two main options that you probably already have been considering are the 4-set Vermilion Hereafter and the 2-set Viridescent Veneer with any 2-set that gives 18% attack. When it comes to choosing between these two options for Xiao, generally the 4-set Vermilion Hereafter is the best in slot because it gives high stat value for a set bonus. However, if you have the 2-set combination like the 2-set VV with the 2-set Gladiator with better substats, you want to prioritize better crit stats over forcing yourself to use the 4-set Vermilion Hereafter. The TLDR version of it is basically to focus the Vermilion Hereafter set unless your crit substats on your Vermilion pieces suck compared to your 2-set VV pieces and other miscellaneous 2-set combinations that offer the 18% attack. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this guide, it's that Xiao loves crit substats more than he loves a specific set bonus. This is because his talents, weapon passives, and supports can provide so many different damage bonus buffs and attack buffs that oftentimes we're already oversaturated on these two sources of damage. Thus, the best way to boost Xiao's damage is to focus on crit stats, which as of right now, we can only boost through artifact stats and weapon main stats. And just a quick note before we move on, you can even run double 2 sets that offer the 18% attack like the 2 set Gladiator with the 2 set Shimanawa's Reminiscence if their crit substats are extremely good. Anyways, for artifact stats, it's the pretty standard DPS setup with attack percent in the Hourglass, Animo damage bonus in the Goblet, and crit rate or crit damage in the Circlet. As for substats, your priority is crit damage, crit rate, energy recharge, attack percent, then everything else. I already emphasized why crit is important, but energy recharge is something that you cannot ignore when building Xiao. Even with a second Animo character to generate extra energy, most Xiao players should aim to get a total of 130 to 140 energy recharge. Weapon rankings have practically stayed the same for Xiao since his very first banner. There really is only one notable addition to his weapon repertoire which was introduced during his first rerun alongside Shen He. For Xiao's best weapon, we still have his signature weapon, which is the Primordial Jade Wingspear. This polearm has high base attack, a little bit of extra crit rate, and a passive that grants both attack and damage bonus. It's everything that Xiao wants alongside being aesthetically pleasing. In the number 2 spot, we have Staff of Homa. To this day, I still don't know what the heck Hoyoverse was thinking when they made this weapon, but Xiao mains rejoice because he is the only other character in the game that can reliably use this polearm's passive alongside Hu Tao. And at number 3 and 4, we have Calamity Queller and Vortex Vanquisher. Calamity Queller is our newest addition for Xiao, and honestly, it's pretty good. A super high base attack means better value out of any attack percent buffs or artifact stats that you might have. Vortex Vanquisher has the same idea as Calamity Queller of being a stat stick for attack percent. Oftentimes, we will use Xiao with a shielder to keep him safe during his elemental burst, so the passive being doubled when shielded is surprisingly useful when running Xiao. And beyond these 4 or 5-star polearms, we have some pretty damn good 4-star options as well. Namely, the two that I want to mention are the Deathmatch and Lithic Spear at spots 5 and 6. Lithic Spear is a deadly weapon, but strictly looking at R1 Lithic Spear, Deathmatch might be the more consistent option for low spenders, given how punishing it can be to get refinements on the weapon banner. This is especially true because we can't maximize the lithic passive when pretty much all of our animo energy batteries are either from Mondstadt or Inazuma. 
However, if you do have a high refinement lithic spear, you don't have to waste your time and money grinding out multiple battle passes for deathmatch refinements. If you're looking for a crit damage option but do not have Staff of Homa, look no further than the Blackcliff Pole. This weapon is completely free to play and only costs Star Glitter. Additionally, the weapon doesn't need refinements since the passive is very conditional. If you cannot afford to buy the battle pass or pull on the weapon banner, this is the ultimate option I would suggest for players who truly cannot obtain premium weapons. And last but not least, I know some other guide makers and theory crafters discuss the uses of energy recharge pole arms, specifically engulfing lightning, scoured spine, and favonius lance. My advice would be to use scoured spine or favonius lance if you have none of the other pole arms that I've already listed. Although these weapons don't offer much, at least they have high base attacks and decent passives. The same thing can be said about Engulfing Lightning, but this polearm is just so strong on other characters like Raiden, Shen He, and Shang Ling that it's just not worth using it on Xiao. In the end, any of these energy recharge weapons are viable, but treat them as last resorts over first options. Now that you know how to build Xiao, you might wonder about things you need to know when playing Xiao. I'm sure you already have the basics down, like how Xiao's main gimmick is to plunge attack during his elemental burst, but there are a few things that you have to know and manage if you want to play Xiao to his full potential. First things first, let's touch upon the biggest thing you need to know, Xiao's energy problem. Although Xiao is not the worst character to generate energy with, he definitely is not good at it either. This is mainly because during his elemental burst, your elemental skill will not generate any particles. As a result, the first tip that you need to know about Xiao is to spam his elemental skill right before using your elemental burst. Doing so will allow two things. First, the energy generated will be delayed enough so that it is absorbed after Xiao's energy gauge is emptied. Second, while you plunge attack during your elemental burst, charges of your elemental skill will naturally refill which minimizes the time spent sitting on multiple charges of Xiao's elemental skill. Of course, this also does effectively increase your DPS. This is something that is super easy to understand and is super useful to all Xiao mains. The change in gameplay is tiny if you're not doing this yet, but it really does make your Xiao gameplay feel a little bit better. If you're looking for something more advanced, look no further than plunge combos. Most Xiao players are fine with just spamming plunge attacks, and I do that too, but there are a few adjustments that you can make to squeeze out a tiny bit more damage in certain scenarios. In a lot of situations, what you can do is weave in a normal attack after every plunge attack. Xiao's first normal attack has two hits and it's super fast, meaning we can immediately jump out of the normal attack animation and into another plunge attack. If you time it perfectly, you can even get some animation cancelling going, but clearly I'm not good enough for that by the looks of this clip. More importantly, adding a normal attack after each plunge attack is especially relevant for players that are running a weapon with a passive that is dependent on scoring hits against opponents. Weapons with these kind of passives include Primordial Jade Wingspear and Vortex Vanquisher. By adding in a normal attack after each plunge attack, you can have the time it takes to reach the polearm's massive passive stacks. This is some super useful stuff for maximizing your damage potential as quickly as possible. Against the single enemy, you can even add both a normal attack and charge attack after each plunge attack. For Xiao mains, this is known as the jet combo and it's great for single target damage. However, if you're in a situation where there's multiple enemies around, stay away from this plunge combo because spamming out high plunge attacks is much better for clearing out big waves of enemies. So I told you how to build Xiao and I gave you a few tips regarding what you can do to make your Xiao gameplay more refined. You know, that's cool and all, but I have yet to touch upon one of the most important parts of Xiao, which is team building. After all, he's a hyper carry DPS that loses HP, so it's important that we surround him with the best possible supporting cast, or else he'll either do baby damage numbers or just flat out die during his elemental burst. Starting off with Xiao's most classic team and probably the most expensive team, we have the No Reaction slash Double Geo team. This team consists of Xiao, Albedo, Zhongli, and Jean. Jean can now be replaced by Sayu for healing, but that hardly makes a dent in how expensive this team actually can be. As a team filled with promotional 5-star characters, you can bet that it's a hell of a strong team. Zhang Li provides a shield that protects Xiao and reduces the elemental resistances of enemies. Albedo provides off-field damage and completes the Geo Resonance to grant Xiao even more damage when he's shielded. Jean wraps up the team by being both a dedicated healer and animal energy battery for Xiao. 
Although this team may struggle against enemies that pose an element check like Abyss Heralds and Lecters, it's still a super strong team in a variety of cases and remains one of my favorite Xiao teams to use. Beyond the expensive double Geo team, the other combination that provides plenty of buffs to Xiao is the double Pyro setup. Instead of Zhongli and Albedo, we now use Bennett and either C for Yanfei or Toma to provide the Pyro Resonance to Xiao. Bennett is a pretty standard attack buffer and healer, while Toma and C4 Yanfei provide a strong shield for Xiao. Yanfei C4 gives her a shield after casting her elemental burst which can be used to protect Xiao. The great thing about using Yanfei as a shielder is that she's also a catalyst character, so she can buff Xiao with the thrilling tales of Dragon Slayer's catalyst. On the other hand, Toma is an easy to build and phenomenal shielder that is very strong at even C1 or C2, making him the cheaper option for some players. However, if you do have him at C6, he can even grant plunge attack bonus to Xiao, which is a rare buff among characters. For the last slot, any Animo energy battery works, but recently some players have even opted for Raiden Shogun as a secondary DPS and energy generator because you don't need Jean or Sayu when you have Bennett to heal. And last but not least, here's a little free-to-play friendly team for you guys. It's a little bit unorthodox, but recently I've been using this team on my free-to-play account and it works surprisingly well. The team revolves around Barbara being the main healer and buffer for Xiao. Barbara can fill the role as an attack buffer with the thrilling tales of Dragon Slayer's catalyst and her heals are pretty strong when she's built for full HP and healing bonus. To round out the rest of the team with non-premium characters, we add two more 4-star characters with Fischl and Sucrose to turn the team into a pretty strong electrocharge setup. With Fischl, you get some nice off-field damage while Xiao is in his elemental burst. As for Sucro, she's not just an Animo energy battery for Xiao, but also a team buffer for the electrocharged reactions. Overall, the team has really good survivability with Barbara and underrated damage with Sucrose's elemental mastery sharing. Saying that a team with a full support Barbara has underrated damage is something that I never thought I'd actually say until I tried the team out for myself. In the absence of Zhongli on my free-to-play account, this Xiao team has been carrying my Spiral Abyss runs along with Ayaka. But besides that, that's all I have time for today. If you enjoyed this guide or thought it was useful, be sure to support both the video and the channel. You can follow me on Twitch, join my Discord, sub to the YouTube channel, or whatever people do nowadays. Other than that, it's the same as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.